We want to see the provinces and the federal government coming forward tomorrow with action plans and budgets to back up those action plans. There was a big announcement in Ontario day before yesterday. We're really hoping that people come prepared with their plans for how we're going to intervene. We cannot afford to wait two years for the end of the inquiry when we know many of the things we need to have happening. We need to start taking action now. So the most important thing to do is to keep talking to each other and working together and finding ways to move forward, not to isolate the problem, not to marginalize the problem, not to say it's somebody else's problem, it's federal or provincial jurisdiction. I think we have to erase those boundaries and find ways to keep all of our citizens safe. It doesn't matter what your background is, you should be able to walk in the streets and feel safe. If you're a young Indigenous woman who's been isolated from her community, and marginalized in terms of our society through racism and poverty and all of the stigmas that go along with that, that's clearly something we can do and how we educate ourselves to be respectful of those people. You know, we have all these issues with, um, with, the, with the justice system, with uh, the education system, with the health system. So how do we bring about change? And by listening to families, they are the ones that are the expert witnesses. They are the ones that are going to make those those recommendations and also actually move on them like we did in Treaty 3. We had, we organized our own gathering based on our cultural principles and our values to start that healing process.